What is up guys? Joel Black Death Rash Doom once again and it's time for another discussion video. I figured it might be an interesting one to talk about albums that time forgot. And you know some of you guys are going to be like well I didn't forget that album or that band's not forgotten. I'm not really necessarily talking about bands that are forgotten. I'm talking about albums that have just been kind of left in the dust. Whether you remember them specifically or not it's an album that doesn't get talked about as much because maybe their newer albums are something that are a little more interesting or have caught a little bit more steam and these are older albums that people just don't really talk about as much anymore or it's something that you know from a band there's at least one of them in here where they only released one album and it truly is something that people have just kind of forgotten about and what I'm listening to right now is almost a bonus except for what's crazy is this band was kind of forgotten for a long time unless you were really you know, underground, uh, DSBM, suicidal black metal uh, person, uh, a lot of people kind of forgot about Anti, and I'm listening to Anti right now. I've actually got it on CD and vinyl. You know it's special to me when I have it on vinyl, because I've only got like 50 vinyls, so I, you know, I only collect some of the really cool stuff, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, Anti, Insignificance, bleh, <laughs> Insignificance of Life, can't talk. Uh, this came out, oh god, let's see, I've got my computer right here for exactly this uh, 2006 and this is suicidal depressive black metal from Germany really good fucking shit uh, I guess I may as well show you what it's all about real quick but yeah you guys kinda get a bonus except for like I said these guys released an album just last year and it was pretty damn good but I haven't given enough time to know if it's as good as this but yeah it's just a standard black vinyl though I do like the little anti logo there it's pretty fucking cool this is out on obscure abhorrence productions and this is limited 281 out of 530 so that's actually pretty cool uh, but yeah anti really cool stuff but that's not what I'm here to talk about I'm here to talk about these other 10 albums so let's get to that uh, with these ones I'll get a little bit more in depth but if you haven't heard anti pretty good stuff Starting off with, so this is a band that I really feel like Time Forgot. Not just this album, but I feel like everybody forgot about this band. I got into this band from a compilation called Blackened back in the day, and one of them, I believe it was the third one, had a really good list of bands on there. I mean, Mayhem was on there, and a bunch of obscure bands, and just it was a really big compilation, all kinds of cool stuff. And on that compilation was this, Profanity. Uh, stronger Than Steel? Stronger Than Steel. <laughs> This is Swedish black metal at its finest, and it's just so forgotten by time. This is like 1998, if I remember correctly. Let me see if I can... Yep, 1998, wanted to confirm that, but yeah, Swedish band. Some people would say this has a little bit of a death metal sound. Definitely this is going to be for fans of, like, Dissection, or, like, Tholkandra, or any of that, like, melodic Swedish... Uh, death metal that might have a little bit of a black metal tinge to it. There's melodies, twin guitars, uh, amazing drumming, really, really good stuff. Just really something that should have been more well known and maybe had these guys put out more material. You know, this, this might have been something that got more recognition, but as it stands, I really feel like this is something the time forgot. Uh, profanity spelled uh, with a P-H, it's P-R-O-P-H-A-N-I-T-Y. And uh, Stronger Than Steel, pretty damn cool. I don't know how rare this is, I've never really checked. But uh, pretty cool if you find it, get it, I highly recommend it. This band is super fucking weird. I swear I've not met many people that know this band, and yet I know they're a really well-known band, but around here, like, I met, I've met one dude, and he was kind of a weird tweaker dude, uh, that listens to Root. And my favorite album, The Book, Root. A Czechia band. These guys have been around since God was a fucking boy. Uh, they influenced black metal bands. This is the one band that's uh, not necessarily straight up black metal on this list, but is certainly dark metal and certainly has the leanings towards black metal. Fucking this album, the book, is absolutely amazing. You've got clean operatic vocals via an older gentleman named Big Boss who just kicks ass. Very operatic quite the range on him from deep croaking almost growls to mumblings whispers and sung passages that are just unbelievably cool 
and obscure and original, and yet this band is just so unknown. His vocals do take a bit to get used to. Uh, obviously, English is not his native tongue. There are a few mistakes and a few hiccups lyrically as far as that, but it doesn't matter. The music on this, as far as the guitar work, it is just a riff fest of epic proportions. The drumming is very, very well done, uh, quite bombastic, and really fills in the music nicely, but it's really all about Big Boss's vocals. Root, I cannot recommend highly enough. You kind of want to go from their middle era to their early era, in my opinion. I've heard some of the newer stuff, and uh, even if you look on Metal Archives, the reviews for it, it's not as good. Uh, it's still good, but it's not the book or my other favorite album, uh, Black Seal, but also Temp Temple of the Underworld. I mean, just all the early stuff is super fucking good. The Root is like a band that I just don't hear people talk about, and whenever I do, I'm like, ooh, and it's always online. Like, it's, I've never met a person that was just, like, normal, that was like, hey, dude, have you ever listened to Root? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. So I don't think this band is necessarily forgotten by time, uh, but, but I feel like it's leaning that way. <laughs> I feel like this band's kind of going to get forgotten about very soon, and some of these albums, uh, the middle albums, just kind of don't get talked about anymore. Uh, and that band is Lunar Aurora. Now, Lunar, Lunar Aurora is an amazing band from Germany, I believe. God, if I could just get to it. I'm f fucking positive they're from Germany. I think they're from Germany. <laughs> yeah, I'm like 99% sure they're from Germany. But uh, this is my favorite album, Mond. It's amazing, spacey noisy, int introspective, almost cosmic black metal, but with such force and sometimes such repetitive nature within it that it's like it drives the rhythms in your head for like nine minutes sometimes, and it's just like so powerful and such a wall of noise, and I just don't hear people talking much about Lunar Aurora. I feel like it's one of those bands that was always a great that never got talked about enough. Sure, people know who Lunar Aurora is, but there's a lot of people that don't. And uh, Mond is a great place to start. It's one of their middle albums, and it's just fucking... The production on this and the way it is put together is almost terrifying sounding. It's just got... It's almost what's on the cover. It's like being on the landscape of the moon while getting assaulted by cosmic rays while slowly suffocating to death. It's incredible. I cannot recommend Mond enough. Now the next album is interesting because I actually own the CD and vinyl for this one as well and yeah this band was just like always never really known in my opinion. I never hear anybody talk about Valkyrja and uh, especially their first album The Invocation of Demise. This is one of the like first vinyls I ever bought. That's when I started buying a few vinyls in like the early 2000s. This was like 2000... Uh, do, 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 2007. Maybe this wasn't one of the first ones I bought then, because I did buy some in the early 2000s. But uh, yeah, Valkyrja, Invocation of Demise. This is straight up, like, at least at this time, this was Watain worship, older Watain worship, in the best way possible. Very riffy, very bombastic, speedy, and fucking just razor-sharp riffs that just cut through everything. Very amazing songs of note. Uh, the very last song, Frostland, is just goddamn amazing. And this is actually a really cool record. It's been a while since I pulled this out, but it does have a little, you know, lyric sheet. Nothing big there. Literally lyrics. Uh, but, but, and this is on Northern Silence Productions, uh, but you get this nice marble gray fucking vinyl. So badass. Gray is my favorite color, so... <laughs> my favorite non-color. So this was just amazing to get in this crazy marble gray. And if I remember correctly, this is also a numbered vinyl as well. Let me see about that. Uh, yeah. I, is that a one? What the fuck is that? An A? It looks like 148 out of 520. Look, look at that. That's, what, what is that supposed to be? <laughs> a? Okay, so uh, Valkyrja, pretty badass. If you like Watain or you like uh, even Dissection, 
And you just like riffy black metal that's fairly well produced and musically is is top notch. You know, Valkyrie is a great place to start. They do have another album or two, actually at least two more albums, but man, I haven't heard them in a long time. I have their second album on CD, but it, it's been a while. But I do remember Invocation of Demise being something that I really, really enjoyed at the time, and uh, the last time I listened to it, I really enjoyed it as well. Speaking of Watain, so obviously Watain is not a forgotten band. Like I said, this is not about for forgotten bands. This is about forgotten albums, and my god, nobody talks about my favorite Watain, which is one of my favorite black metal albums of all time, Cassus Luciferi. I don't even know how to put into words how much this album means for me. This, when this came out, it was right when I was re-delving into black metal. Uh, I had been for years in the early 2000s just listening to the same shit that I had and the same bands and uh, just trying to get their new albums, maybe exploring a tiny bit. But I remember right around this time I started exploring black metal a lot more again. It was like 2000, well, let's look. Um, Cassus Luciferi is 2000... 2003. Yeah, that makes sense. 2003. And when I got this, I was just blown away by this and bands like Thunderbolt and Gramble Isles Key. I know nobody wants to talk about that band. But, uh, and what other bands? Onscapped and Offermod and just a bunch of weird ass fucking bands that I was like, holy shit, there's like a Merrimack, there's like a bunch of bands that are fucking badass that I had never heard before, and this one kind of started it all. This is just fucking every black metaler's dream, in my opinion, just give it a chance if you haven't. Every single song on here is gold. Devil's Blood, Black Salvation, Puzzles of Flesh, I Am the Earth is fucking incredible, and ending with the self- well, not self-titled, but Cassis List Fairy, what the, name, what the name of the album is. Uh, this band is pure perfection. The transitions between riffs, there's always like a start or a stop, like all the instruments stop or one keeps going, or just like, just in incredible transitions between riffs. Badass drum fills in between riffs, start-stop shit, fucking quick like, just on guitar, and then everything comes crashing back in, just... So many amazing ways of expressing uh, the transition between movements in a song. It's fucking incredible. That's worth listening to this album again in itself. It's just marveling at the, how they go from one section to another and how each song starts and how each song ends. It's just they did such a goddamn good job with this and it's just another... It's just another pool of riffs that is so fucking deep you cannot see the bottom. The drumming is perfect. Eric Danielson's vocals on this album are fucking perfect. This is literally, in my opinion, one of the finest pieces of black metal ever written. And man, it doesn't get talked about enough. I did briefly just mention, for a second there, Onscapped. I discover Onscapped right around this same time, maybe a little bit later. And I might have been late with uh, Cassus Luciferi, I don't fucking remember. But uh, let's see if I can even find Onscapped. Uh, same year. Same fucking year. And this is crazy because this is still sealed. <laughs> I never got around to opening this and I just, it's still sealed. It's got a little hole in the packaging right here. But we've got Onscapped's Draco Sitmihi Ducks. I don't know how you pronounce that. This is the Ajna version. And uh, I also do have it on CD. Draco Sitmihi Ducks is fucking what the fuck black metal. Uh, if you listen to other Onscapped, it's not like this album. This is their first album, and this is way more depressive, mid-paced to slow-paced, almost doomy at times, fucking crazy dark black metal with howling vocals that I don't hate. Uh, I don't like shit like Silencer. I don't like the super early Burzum screeches. I just don't like that kind of screech. These are the kind of fucking screeches I like. This is this has howling that is beyond amazing. I cannot say enough good things about Onscap's first album. These guys are from Sweden, and if you just need something to fucking put you in the mood to be either angry or depressed or just absolutely sad, this is the one for you. It's such a fucking crazy atmosphere. 
I can't really describe it. It's unlike most black metal. It's unlike even most DSBM. I don't. I wouldn't classify Onscat as a DSBM band. However, this album certainly, certainly leans that way, and it is a masterpiece of craziness. I highly recommend Onscat's Draco Sit Mihi Dux. That's probably how you pronounce it, with more of a oomph. Probably not. Okay, so we've got a few more albums here. God damn, this band. I mean, there's probably whole generations now that have never heard of this fucking band, and that's just that's just sad. Let's see what year this is. I think it's 99, uh, 98. So, god damn, this is one of my favorite black metal albums of all time. Ophthalamia Dominion. Uh, Ophthalamia is, Jesus Christ. I'm not even gonna get into the story of, like, who the band is and shit. Uh, it and all, and all that crap. But anyways, uh, Ophthalamia is like the most traditional heavy metal black metal ever. <laughs> like, this is straight up black metal, don't get me wrong, but song structure and riff wise, this is like very much structured like traditional heavy metal. Um, the songs even are all. I've, so one of my friends is actually not into black metal or really extreme metal at all. He's way more into like glam and like traditional heavy metal and like a little bit of power metal, a little bit of thrash, you know? Um, he actually likes this album because it's just this crazy riff fest. I keep saying riff fest. It's just this crazy hardcore amount of really excellent riffs packed into eight songs, and what's crazy is two, the two bookending songs, I believe there's eight songs, right? Uh, yeah. The two bookending songs, you know, the first and the last track are just intros and outros, though they do have lyrics, uh, but it's not the same as the other six tracks, so those ones I don't like as much, doesn't matter. The six songs that those bookend are fucking incredible. There's so much metal majesty and... It just feels like a classic. The very first time you hear Time for War, fucking Final Hour of Joy, uh, A Black Rainbow Rising, or even the title track, Dominion, holy shit. It's just like, it's like you've heard it before almost. It's so familiar. It's so classic feeling. It just feels like somebody took your favorite old heavy metal band and was just like, let's make it black metal. You know, let's take Iron Maiden and make a black metal. Maybe not, Iron Maiden's not a great example, but, you know, whatever your favorite, like, traditional heavy metal band is, and just, like, fucking make it black metal. Just give it a black metal coat of paint. The vocals are black metal, the fucking drums blast, uh, they're speed picking and shit like that, but, man, it just sounds like... It sounds so traditional. It's unreal. I highly recommend Dominion. A lot of people like their earlier albums, but they just don't have the majesty of this one. And I think part of it actually comes down to the production on this. I don't say the production makes an album great by any means, but in this case, uh, maybe the production helped a little bit. Or maybe it's because it's the first one I ever heard, but Dominion is fucking king in my opinion and here's another one another special one because i have it on vinyl as well i just got this recently so this is a spoiler alert i got this from amoeba music in san francisco my favorite record store um archon and faustus perdition in sanibelis fucking what i got this for ten dollars ten fucking dollars at amoeba music and was like squealed with joy Archon and Faustus is a band that's still going. They put out an EP recently, or maybe it was a couple years ago, um, and it's excellent stuff. Passing the Necromantion, fucking amazing shit. I have all of the Archon and Faustus uh, full lengths. I'm a huge fan. Got the shirt. Actually, I've had this shirt twice. My girlfriend has my other one because it started getting worn out, and I found this for cheap, so I was like, hey, you can have my old one. And she's stoked because she likes Archon and Faustus also. Archon and Faustus is another perfect blend of black and death metal, but just so fucking heavy. These drunken, crazy bastards are fucking incredibly dissonant, harsh, heavy, and really one of my favorite bands of all time. Now, I will say that Perdition in Sanibelis is not my favorite album by them. I think Orthodoxin is. Uh, I have that on A5 Digipack up there and on vinyl. But I wanted to talk about this one in particular because I feel like Orthodoxin, the one after that, kind of overshadowed this one. 
And for good reason, I feel like Orthodox it is just more of a solid album. All of the songs are more consistent. Overall, it feels way more like a cohesive unit of an album, and it's absolutely crushing and suffocating. This one doesn't feel as cohesive. Uh, there's just variations in sound and just the way songs are written that just make it sound like uh, this album was kind of pieced together, but not necessarily in a bad way. This is a fucking excellent album, don't get me wrong. And I heard this band because of this album with songs like M33 Constellation and uh, Whirlwind Journey. There's actually videos for those. Try finding those videos in good quality enough to watch, though. They're fucking... They're terribly, terribly um, pixelated and just shit. But later on, I started really getting into this album and started really delving, and Profanus Codex LXVI, whatever the fuck that is, is actually probably one of my favorite Archon and Faustus songs. Yeah, it probably is my favorite Archon and Faustus song right now. Profanus Codex is just a nuclear bomb of fucking abrasive black death metal that will blow you clean out of your shoes. Possibly your socks as well. There is nothing special about this album. I'm not even... I mean, literally, the sleeve is just lyrics and fucking pictures, and it's a black vinyl. But for $9.99, one of my favorite albums from one of my favorite bands, fuck yeah, listen to Archon and Faustus. It's another band that I just don't... Like, I know so many people that listen to black and death metal, and they're like, nah, never heard it. Nah, never heard it. Here's another one. Don't hear anybody talk about. Jesus Christ. Uh, I've only got two left. And this is... This album... You're not going to believe me. You're not going to believe me. But if you took the time to listen to the song that I'm about to talk to... You about... There was a pause there because I had to collect my thoughts. Um, the song that I'm about to talk to you about is literally the most catchy black metal song and is the song that gets stuck in my head the most. It doesn't matter how much time it's been since I've listened to it. I can instantly think of... It's this fucking album, Forest of Fog, Abgrund. It's just, oh my god, this is riff mastery. And this is one dude. Forest of Fog, I mean, I don't even want to say they're forgotten. Like, nobody knows this band that I know. Forest of Fog is fucking crazy. And the second song, Nebel Knocked, is what I'm talking about. Now, the first time you hear it, you might be like, yeah, that's a fucking pretty good song. That's pretty catchy. No, it wasn't until, like, the tenth time I heard it where I was like, holy fuck, that is, like, one of the greatest songs ever written. And I wake up so many mornings to this day, to this fucking day, sometimes multiple mornings in a row, and I haven't even heard this in a while. And I, that fucking song is stuck in my head. Fuck. I should be playing that in the background. I have played it in the background of some videos of mine. Uh, but the, the third song, Die Vision, D-A Vision. I don't know how it's fucking pronounced. These guys are uh, Forest of Fog. I, you know what? I can't remember where Forest of Fog is from. It's one dude from Elveti, however you pronounce that. Switzerland? Um, but yeah, that band Elveti, however the fuck you pronounce that. E-L-U-V-E-I-T-I-E. -E. Uh, this is one dude that used to play in that band. I don't even think he does anymore. Uh, nope, ex-member. It's This sounds like a full fucking band. I, I don't know how to describe it except for excellent black metal. If you like... No nonsense, riff fests, just tons and tons of fucking great riffs, awesome drumming. I think the drumming might even be programmed, but if it is, it's fucking amazing. Uh, vocals are fucking great, just the entire album flows so goddamn well. I cannot recommend Forest of Fog, Abgrund, Abgrunde, however the hell you pronounce it, and listening to Nebelnacht, just listen to Nebelnacht a few times and maybe you'll see what I see. You know, some people, music just hits different for other people, but Neville Knocked, for me, one of the greatest songs ever fucking written on an album that is long, long forgotten, if it was even fucking known in the first place. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's like, I remember Forrest the Fog, I listen to them from day one, you don't know what you're talking about, brother. Well, I don't care, Mr. One Person out there, or two people out there. 
I don't know anybody who talks about that shit. Last shit I have for you is not an unknown band. But goddamn, I get tired of people being like, Oh, you mean the Swedish band? I'm like, no, not the fucking Swedish band. The German band is infinitely better. One of my favorite black metal bands of all time, and this is probably their most underrated... I can't talk. Underrated albums in their discography, and it's Srontgorth or whatever, however you fucking pronounce that, and that long-ass title at the end. I am not going to try to pronounce this, but Srontgorth is, I believe, the reason this one is weird is because it's like older tracks re-recorded, maybe demo tracks re-recorded, does not fucking matter, don't even, I shouldn't have even said that, it doesn't matter. This sounds like a full cohesive album, but it's just, this is the one that time forgot. Nagelfar from Germany, Nagelfar with a fucking E, goddammit, no Nagelfar without an E, you need the E for excellence. Uh, but yeah, I have the original pressings of the first three albums, uh, yeah. I fucking love Nagelfar, one of my favorite bands of all time, all three albums. I love Virus West, I love Hunnengrab I'm Herbst, however you pronounce that. This is my favorite, though, and a lot of it has to do with the, uh, um, Capital Zwei der Sommer which is the second song, I believe. It's really weird, because they all have, like, giant titles and subtitles. I think it's the second song. Um, it's, like, 18 minutes long, I believe. This track is fucking up there with the fucking track I was just talking about on Forest of Fog, except for way more involved. If you're not aware of who Nagelfar is, this is pre-The Ruins of Beverast, which is also one of my favorite bands. Um... This is just black metal that is absolutely creative, epic, majestic, cosmic, vicious, beautiful, harmonic, and fucking destructive at the same time. It's got everything you could possibly want. Bombastic fucking riffs, crazy hardcore drumming blasts through the fucking roof, fucking riffs piled on riffs that are in molten riff pools of magma riffs that drill through the earth with riffs and come out the other side, riffs pouring out of everywhere. There's just... <coughs> I can't even explain the majesty and the fucking greatness that is Nagelfar, and I cannot describe how fucking epic this album is, and I cannot describe how much that song is just one of the greatest things in the world, and it means the world to me every time I hear it. It's 18 minutes of... That was 18 minutes? That felt like six. I need to go back and listen to it again. And then you just want to hear the whole album, and then you realize the whole album's amazing. From the first song to the fucking last note, this is just a weird journey of musical genius, and somebody, Alexander von Mylenwald, uh, the main guy behind this and the ruins of Beverast, he's just a genius and he does not think like the rest of us do and it's very apparent when you hear things like this or hear things um, like uh, Blood Vaults, you know, it's just this is top tier black metal that I cannot recommend it enough, whether you haven't heard it in a while or if you've never heard it before go listen to Nagelfar go listen to Forest of Fog Archon and Faustus, fucking Onscat what do you guys think what are some other albums that time has forgotten that maybe back in the day they were well-known? Like, Cassus Luciferi actually made quite an impact when it came out. Uh, but nowadays, nobody talks about Cassus Luciferi, like, at all. It's just... And, and don't get me started on Rabid Death Curse. That album is so long forgotten. It's another fucking great Watain album, their first one. Uh, but yeah, let me know some albums that maybe... Uh, you know, had a little bit of promotion people did know about, and maybe people just don't talk about anymore. That would be really cool. Always look forward to your comments. Uh, if you'd like, comment, subscribe. That'd be the best way to support, support the channel. I can't talk. Great time to make a video. I need a beer. Thank you guys for watching. You guys rule, and keep it metal.